Hello, welcome to SmartHelping.com. This is the overview video for all the latest upgrades for the general manufacturing plant financial model. It's a 10-year model. What I'm going to do in the video is go through each tab, all the inputs, and explain how everything links together. The upgrades were adding a cap table and adding income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, and then just getting everything up to date with that. So we'll go through... Um, all the updates here on the first tab global control you start with the company name you can put in whatever that might be the launch year this is going to define all the timing of the model when it starts uh, when your drop down start if you do update this make sure you update all light yellow tabs with proper dates in the drop down lists accordingly all the number all the all the values and all the light yellow cells are arbitrary you'll go through and put your own data into those you can define the end month of the model, so it goes up to a max of 10 years, but you can end it on any month. It could be five years, three years, or some partial year. Um, here you can also define if you're going to include the terminal value, which is going to be based on the trailing 12-month sales and a percentage of that. And that will be, um, that will hit cash flow. Also, we have cash sources here. Um, so you can define if you're going to do any debt funding, and this flows over to the debt schedule tab here. And note, if you do select a yes on the include terminal value, it will zero out and um, essentially pay back any debt owed on that month of on the end month if this is yes. If it's no, it just runs into perpetuity, and it'll show through the 10-year model. Uh, finally, tax rates here. If you want to see tax effects, you can put that in here, and it will go down to net income. And we I did include logic to apply some of the uh, net sales proceeds to equipment, and that will affect tax rates, uh, the taxes payable as well. You'll see that on the income statement. Again, if you don't want it, you can zero this out. Next up, we have the cap table. So the entire model runs itself and figures out the minimum cash you need to cover all the burn and startup costs, so the cash balance never goes below zero. That's what this number is. If you want to plan for a reserve, you can just go to startup costs and enter reserve here. In that case, when you hit zero, technically you'd have this reserve amount still available. Then you could define, you know, the stock units, uh, the amount of common shares, pref A and B, if applicable, or they could all be common shares or, you know, common and A, whatever you want to set it up like. And then you could define all the different uh, funds you received if you have outside investors, how much common stock they get, preferred, a and B, their final diluted ownership value, and um, number of shares. Also, you can do that for owners, operators. And if you don't have uh, outside investors, that's fine. Just zero out all these and um, populate the owner side of it. If it's just a single operator owner, then you would just put you know one row with however much was funded and 100% for whatever... Um, stock is being issued also this model will show cash available to distribute and give an IRR for each entity and you can see the aggregate of each pool as well next up unit cost and production this is just the the meat and potatoes of the model this is where you're going to find uh, up to 10 category types that your manufacturing plant producing the start month that you will begin producing them. And then just assumptions around the max units produced per year um, based on the max units produced per day, operating days per year, average sale price will get, um, that will define uh, revenues. Then you've got total annual labor here. That's directly, so this is directly related to producing the units based on labor rates, uh, max required laborers, for this um, unit type, average hour spent per laborer, max working days, and then so then you have annual material costs applied here. So up to 25 costs per unit, it'll give you total materials, and this will flow into cost of goods sold and inventory. Um, labor also flows into cost of goods sold. You can see over in the monthly detail our units produced is based on that um, unit and cost production area and, and it will look that up 
and multiply that by the um, unit unit price you're selling for to get the revenues. Um, you can see here direct labor costs also come in as a cost of goods sold, payroll tax and benefits accordingly, which flows up into this row. So this is actually includes all labor costs, including all direct labor costs, including payroll tax and benefits. Uh, direct material costs. So these are this is your this is going to drive inventory values. Um, <clears throat> we also have indirect overhead, which is driven off of per unit because we're distilling all the cost of goods sold down on a per unit basis. So this is based on um, fixed expenses, this top area here. Any fixed costs that are directly related to production of units. Um, let me not get too far ahead of myself. So unit production, we went through this. This drives direct labor material costs. Uh, capacity growth, so this is where, so where unit cost and production is gonna define the maximum capacity. This defines what percentage of that's reached per unit type over the course of 10 years. Um, equipment, so this is where you're gonna define all the different equipment purchases you might have to put into the facility, the account, the cost per unit, the months of it's in service, useful life. And then this is where you can actually define per each unit type you're producing, what percentage of that machine are you assigning to each type of unit to get a really accurate, um, this is to just get a more accurate cost of goods sold per unit um, value. And then these are all the checks here. Everything should say good and green. And it basically means you just need to have this, this row always has to equal 100%, however you set it up. Then we've got building. So just if you, you're, you're buying the building, you would put the cost here, useful life. And if you exit and want that included, you would put that here. Um, CapEx. This just runs the same schedule as the equipment tab, but I have a little bit more advanced logic in here for net gains, loss, and tax um, treatment. Um, going to fixed expenses so I went over this top part you can fix fi direct fix direct expenses related to unit production start month of each the detail of it and then we have other operating costs that are not directly related to production here so we've got GNA R&D sales and marketing you can pick the month each starts and the monthly cost per year you can also define if it's a salary item and that will populate more payroll tax and benefits um, for any items there based on this payroll tax and benefits percentage. We've also got units waste, which will come as an expense. We also have months ahead for raw material purchases. So if you put five here, all it means is now if you go look over at the, let's see, this is depreciation matrix, materials purchases. So this says, you know, your raw materials, you're buying five months at a time. So you'll buy for five months, buy again for the next five months, etc. That will drive your materials inventories. And you can set that at any month interval you want. It'll flow accordingly. Uh, also for, for cash flow, that will be zeroed out at the top because that comes in here when things are sold to match the cost of goods sold with when the unit sells. But for cash flow, you'll add that back in and then actually reduce out the purchase of raw materials here, which is done in this formula for actual cash flow. Okay, so building, CapEx, fixed expenses, debt schedule, we went over that, startup costs, just um, these would be like consulting. Any fees really that you're not including in the main uh, logic of the model already, and this will hit in year zero. Terminal value, this is just to show where you're getting all the different, um, so the 27.66 million is just the 12, trailing 12 months sales revenues. Then the multiple applies, this is the actual amount you're getting for sales proceeds and you can define of that amount what percentage is defined to different fixed assets that are still being depreciated and that will drive a net gain or loss if there are any um any any value left of, of the equipment so i put 100 percent. let's say i put 95 percent here instead then if you go look at the capex You've now got um, 
well, everything's on a 10 year life. Let's put everything just so you can see real quick. Let's put everything in month two. And you would go through and put whatever is your strategy for when you're purchasing it and what your timelines look like. But let's just, sh just to show you this, now you can see CapEx, everything still has about one month left of depreciation. So then that it will have a book value, net gain or loss. The value at sale is actually where we're seeing that other 5% go from here. And you see the total amount there, the 1,106 equals this 1,106. Building is done separately. And then sale to building here, net proceeds, and you got total proceeds from everything right there. And that wall flow accordingly. Finally, uh, income statement. So you got unit sales, cost of goods sold. Note there are depreciation items in cost of goods sold, like the depreciation of equipment in the plant facility. So just be aware that that exists and that's when you're trying to f match up everything and make sense of it in your head. Note that those items are being added back when we look at EBITDA because earnings before interest tax and depreciation and amortization because depreciation is a non-cash item for the period it happens in. Um, to total cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, EBITDA, interest, depreciation, then we actually get down to any extra income from the sale of business and anything applied to sale of assets, taxable income, income taxes, and then actual net income over here. And you can see whenever the end month is, this will pop in and affect taxes here. Uh, so that's income statement monthly, income statement annual is the same thing, but on an annual basis. This is the check to make sure I, they obviously have to equal out because they're the same data just across different periods. Balance sheet gives you assets, cash, and inventory. This is materials inventory. Uh, you can see here you get to zero but never below. We got your fixed assets, uh, liabilities, owner's equity, your check here. Balance sheet annual does the same thing but on an annual basis. Always should be zero down there. Cash flow shows you all the different items that are affecting cash flow per period from operating activities, investing activities, financial uh, financing activities, and cash flow per period. And here's the same thing for annual basis. All this updates if you update any of the assumptions. Distributions is a discounted cash flow analysis to look at the project as a whole right here and then that present value, IRR. And then you've also got the investor side and the owner side if there's uh, if it's a joint venture. Um, if not, it'll be just one of these rows will have data in it and the resulting net present value, all that will be the same as the project. Uh, check down here, check here, get the annual detail, also check our, our visualization on the cash flows of each entity. We have executive summary, just kind of gives a high level look at each item. Uh, financial line item. Also, we drive down here to EBIT, e earnings before interest in taxes, <laughs> uh, debt service coverage, annual EBITDA, EBIT per, per unit produced, debt service, other cash flow items, and then IRR equity multiple ROI, total ROI here. And a check, visuals, units produced, revenue, gross profit, average annual EBIT per unit produced, EBIT, Average cost per unit, estimate cost per unit by type, cash flow, total units produced per year by type, and cumulative cash flow for any equity. Now the monthly detail, again, this is where you can kind of see every single item that exists in, in it, all the logic here. And we also show cost of goods sold, gross profit, OPEX, waste, payroll taxes, uh, EBITDA, debt service, other cash flow items, and final cash flow per period, break even, and annual details are the same thing but on an annual basis. Materials shows again the inventory schedule depreciation matrix is used to calculate depreciation. Validation is just the dates for the 10 year period for all the drop downs.
And that's everything. Uh, feel free to check it out. The link will be in the description box below. This is a $75 one-time cost um, to get the template. And I'll post it on smarthelping.com as well as the other vendor sites, Eloquent Definition Models. Alrighty, take it easy. I'll see you guys on the next one.